Hello and welcome to this session on types of data in statistics. Let's keep it simple. Every time you fill out a survey, order something from Amazon, watch a show on Netflix or even make a single click, you are generating data. But not all data is the same. The way we collect the data, the way we organize it and the way we interpret it all depend on its type. And if the type is misunderstood, the entire analysis can head into a wrong direction. That's why understanding the different type of data is one of the most important part in statistics data science and even in something as simple as excel reporting. Whenever we collect data, we are basically keeping track of things we want to study. Each person, product or event that we measure is called an observation. Think of it like if you are running a survey to understand your customer, each customer who fill out the survey is an observation. If you are looking at the sales over time, then each day, each week or month you record is an observation. And if you are studying a product line, then each product you analyze is an observation. For every observation, we collect a value of certain variables such as age, gender, income, customer satisfaction level or your favorite product. In an excel sheet, we can imagine this as each row representing one observation and each column representing one variable. But here's the important part. Not all variables are measured in the same way. The way we measure them is called the level of measurement. And this decides which statistical techniques, graphs and summaries are valid depending on the type of data. It can be either qualitative which describe categories or labels or quantitative which involve measurable numbers. Quantitative data can further be discrete meaning countable whole numbers. For example, 1, 2 or 3 or continuous that means it can be any value within a range. For example, 1.2 lies in the range between 1 and 2. In statistics, we usually talk about three main types. First is nominal data, second is ordinal data, the third one is interval or ratio data. Nominal data is the most basic type. It's about naming or labeling different categories so we can identify them. These categories are qualitative because they describe the labels rather than numerical values. For example, gender, blood group or preferable mode of transport like car, bike or public transport. None of these categories are higher or lower than the other. They are simply different. If you're working in Excel or Power BI, you would usually summarize nominal data using count or percentages. For example, you might say that 50% of the survey respondents prefer cars, 30% prefer bikes and 20% prefer public transport. You can also use nominal data to classify customer by region, product category or subscription type. Graphically, the best way to represent nominal data is through a bar chart or a pie chart, which quickly shows the proportion of each category. This makes it easy to spot trends of which product category is most popular or which region has the most customers. However, nominal data only tells us which category each customer or items falls into, but it doesn't show any order or ranking between the categories. For example, while we know which customer prefer cars, bike or public transport, nominal data doesn't tell us whether one mode is preferred over the other. It just counts the categories. This is where ordinal data comes in. It allows us to rank or order categories, giving more meaningful insight when the order of the responses matter. Now coming to ordinal data, it is mostly qualitative data because it ranks category rather than measuring precisely. For example, think about product review survey, asking customer to rate delivery speed, whether it's excellent, good, average, poor or very poor. There is a clear ranking here. Excellent is better than good, which is better than average and so on. But can we say the difference between the good and excellent is same? as between average and poor? Not really. That's why ordinal data has order, but not equal intervals. In practice, ordinal data is common in research, product reviews and feedback forms. If you have ever seen 5 point delivery rating on an e-commerce site, that's an ordinal data. Businesses often summarize it within percentage, such as 65% of the customer rated delivery as good or excellent. When it comes to graph, ordinal data should be shown in the bar chart where the order of the category is preserved. Pie chart are usually not recommended here because they don't convey the ranking effectively. Finally, we have the interval and the ratio data, often grouped together as scale or quantitative data. These are the numbers that can be measured such as age, weight, income, number of the products sold or customer spending per week. Intervals and the ratio data is quantitative, meaning it deals with the measurable numbers. Some of these data can be discrete which means it can only take certain specific values, usually a whole number. For example, the number of the books a customer buy in a month or the number of the order placed in the day. These are the countable items. On the other hand, some data is continuous, which means it can take any value within a range. 
and it can include fraction. For instance, a customer age, weight or weekly spending can have decimal values. For example, 32.5 years or 192.75 dollars spent in a week. The difference here is that both types are numerical, but discrete data jump from one value to the next with no value in between. For example, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, while the continuous data can take any value within a range, allowing the smooth and precise measurement like 1.2, 2.3 and 3.4. This type of data is extremely powerful because we can apply full range of statistical measures like mean, median, mode, standard deviation and also visualize it using histogram, bar chart or even box plot to understand the distribution and the spread. In fact, most data science and machine learning models work on interval or ratio data because it's mathematically flexible. Now let's bring all of this together in one single example. Imagine Alex who runs a coffee shop called Brew Bean. He wants to launch a new coffee blend, so he surveys 50 customers. He asks their age, gender, how many cups of coffee they drink per week, how much they spend on snacks, which type of coffee they prefer, whether it's espresso, latte or cappuccino, and how satisfied they are with the shop's ambience. Now, when he enters this data into the Excel sheet, each row is one customer and each column is one variable. The type of coffee preferred is nominal data, which can be shown as bar chart. Customer satisfaction on the other hand is ordinal data. So he uses a column chart ordered from very satisfied to very unsatisfied. And age, weekly coffee consumption and snack spending are interval or ratio data. Where he calculate average and show histograms. The interval ratio data also allow him to distinguish between discrete and continuous values like counting cup of the coffee versus measuring weekly spending. In the end, this classification helps him to decide not only what kind of graph to make but also which statistical techniques are more meaningful. In real world industries, the distinctions play a huge role. In healthcare, nominal data like blood group is used to classify patients. Ordinal data like pain severity helps doctor to prioritize treatment and ratio data like blood pressure reading allow precise medical analysis. In finance, Nominal data classify account types. Ordinal data show credit ratings like A to C. And ratio data drives stock market analytics with metrics like price and volume. And in data science project, knowing the data type including whether it is quantitative, qualitative, discrete or continuous is very first step before building any machine learning model because the type determine how the model will process it. So to summarize this, understanding the type of data in statistics is not just about theory topic. It's the foundation of meaningful analysis. Nominal data classifies, ordinal data rank, and interval or ratio data measures. Quantitative data can be discrete or continuous, which helps the precise calculation and prediction. Once you identify the right type, you can choose the right summary, the right graph, and the right statistical test whether you are working in Excel, Power BI, or Python for data science. And that's why if you have ever want to master statistics or become a data scientist, always start with a question, what type of data I am dealing with? Because once you know that, the rest of the analysis flow naturally. And that's all from my side in this video. So see you in the next video.